welcome. Let's go and do this. I'll plow through Cao Cao's army by myself if I have to. Understood. Our enemy is Cao Cao. A frontal assault is too dangerous. We will divide into three units. I will go south. Zhao Yu, you go north. That leaves Zhang Fei to the center. I will assist him. Come, Lord John. If my brothers are okay with it, then so am I. That doesn't mean I trust you, all right?
fine work, my lord. Uh, yeah, you too. So how come you're helping us out anyway? I wish to bring Lord Wu Bei and Jugal Yong together. That is all. Their formation has been broken, and the enemy commander is fleeing the battlefield. This area is mine now! What a stunning display of strength! You have earned my respect. won the first one, but the battle is not over yet. Always try to find and exploit an enemy's weakness. I must retreat. This is not the end. I'm still waiting for a real challenge. Now that's how it's done. You inspire us all. Ha! Easy as you like. No. Alone, we would have struggled mightily. This is thanks to Shu Shu. To the power of intelligence. If you say so. My role here is over. But why? Why won't you stay as our strategist? Juga Liang is a reclusive genius. He has the ability to see the bigger picture. I am a mere amateur beside him. You must secure his cooperation. It was a battle of minds. Xuxu cleverly directed the bravery of Zhang Fei and the others and successfully repelled Cao Cao's army. It was he who recommended to Liu Bei, the land's most brilliant strategist, Zhuge Liang. Liu Bei believed he had finally found the man he had long been searching for. However, despite paying two visits to Juga Liang's home, he still had been unable to meet him. Zhang Fei and Guan Yu were deeply offended, but Liu Bei continued on, paying yet another visit to the home. For if it would help him save the people, he would pay as many visits as it took. And so, it was then that Liu Bei finally found his answer. This is your third visit. What is it that you want so badly from me? I wish to benefit from your wisdom. Tell me what must be done. I know what I want to do. I want to ease the people's suffering. But... But you save one person and it just brings suffering to another. What should I do? <laughs> Benevolence is a tricky thing. Benevolence means valuing the feelings of the people 
over efficiency or profit. Cao Cao's way. is to seize control of the land through brute force. While your path leads the people to a land of benevolence. Your path is that of a true leader of men. But to make it more than just a dream, must have the courage to unite the land. I fear I am incapable. My lord, if you truly want to make it happen, then listen, for I can help you. A world of virtue ruled by righteousness. That was the goal that Juga Liang put before Liu Bei. However, with his current strength, such a world was but a far-off dream. His weakness was underscored by the fact that Cao Cao's army had once again launched an attack on the province of Jing. Although Zhuge Liang's clever tactics allowed them to avoid catastrophe, Liu Bei's future seemed grim indeed. Following Liu Biao's death, his successor Liu Tsong surrendered to Cao Cao. With nothing left to fight for, Liu Bei fled from Cao Cao's army and headed south. Time was of the essence, but something was slowing down the pace of his army's march. The reason? Liu Bei had taken all of the people from Jing with him. His virtue served as a beacon for the downtrodden. And Liu Bei too refused to give up on his comrades, who dreamed like he did of a world of peace. Slowed down by the people, Liu Bei's army was finally caught by Cao Cao at Changban. Was the world of virtue destined to end as a dream before the overwhelming might of Cao Cao's army? Liu Bei and Zhao Yun, as well as the people themselves, were about to be tested. Bring him to safety. You must keep moving. Leave these guys to me, boy. All right. We must find our Lord's son. He's been left behind somewhere around here. <laughs> <laughs> 